I am the Raven. Nevermore. Let's wait for all the. I'm seeing the, the, the dude from Jeepers Creepers is out here or something. It's just freaking birds. Uh, all of a sudden the video goes black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a pretty good bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's get the video started. Hey everybody, Chris from Prepared Mind 101, and this is a long overdue part two that I had long intended to do, but finally getting it done. So not, well, that kind of was long ago. So a couple months at least, um, I did an intro video on this knife, and I was saving it for when we got Will back out here. But this is designed by Jason at DLT. And this is the Bark River Bravo Alpha. So it's a Jason design. But this one is like one is like, I was like, you know what? I want Will to check this thing out when he gets back over here. So now that he's here, we can go ahead and check this bad boy out again. So if you want to find out more, don't go away. He smells the things that he wants to eat. Yeah. Every every 23 years. Every 23. Can't rain all the time. They need to cut the the movie embargo. <laughs> Bring back drive-ins. That'll that'll work. I mean, but if I don't see some new freaking movies soon, I'm gonna lose my mind. Voodoo, man. Everything just goes straight to voodoo anymore. <laughs> What's this? Frick, I can't throw it at those it. birds. Yeah. That's the Bravo Alpha. Bravo Alpha. What in the mother monkey? They're trying to get the murder together. They're calling to bring the rest of Remember, you see how like it all started with one bird, then two, then three. They're bringing the murder together. Yeah, that creeper is going to murder us. <laughs> all right, so this is the Bravo Alpha Bark River Knives. Um, this is directly in my wheelhouse. I mean, this is perfect. William Myers stamp of approval knife. <clears throat> I mean, every, the shut the. F <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, do a little pew pew. That'll make him go away. Oh, even threatening the pew pew makes him go away. Seriously, right seriously, here. we're gonna roll with it. <laughs> Just go. We're outside. Outside they're things excited. happen. They're excited about this new knife from DLT. Outside things happens when you're on the outside. Blade profile is phenomenal. I love this blade profile. I really like they it. They like Almost. it too. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> Almost. I'm going to get killed in a comment section. Kephart ish. You know, and I like that style. Um, the, the handle is phenomenal. I really like that handle. It's nice. It's not got any hot spots in it at all. It's not square. It's not too round. It's perfect for working for long periods of time. And uh, I want to see if this knife is really good for doing one of my favorite traps, the L7. Let's okay. carve a bird trap. I can. All right. So, like I said, this is one of my favorite traps. And uh, the reason why is because I usually set this up near the banks of like uh, ponds, creeks, just like this one we have here. And <clears throat> I set it up uh, for fishing, throw my line out, set it, and forget it. Like the uh, guy from the rotisserie thing. You know, kind of. But, um, you know, what? then I'll. The rotisserie. Set it and forget it. You don't remember those old infomercials? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, basically that's what I do. Um, you know, I'll set it up that way I can just, you know, go back to my camp. I'm, I'm passively fishing at that point, not actively fishing. Um, it just all basically starts out with a stick, just like this one right here. What we need to do is we need to cut this stick in half. This is pretty much an overblown version of this trap. So, you know, it's very visible on camera. Usually we make this a little bit smaller, but let's go ahead down here. Doesn't have to be perfectly in half. Nothing in the woods needs to be perfect. Ron Hood had a statement, good enough.
then be careful with this side because this is when your stick's going to go flying. Unless you do it right. There we go. Yeah, we don't want to go fetch it down there. No, 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 we don't. You know, seeing that this is CPM3V, this knife could take a whole lot of abuse. David Drake approved knife steel. I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah, you do. Just I know it, just don't know it kind of thing. Like one of those things. As long as it's not 1095. <laughs> It's Snap that stick already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, this is bigger than what I usually use, so everybody can see it. That's what she said. <laughs> she rarely says that, though. <laughs> there, see? I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want to go flying. But that's all we got to do, basically, is we got to tear these two in half. And then we need to take a square out of this and a square out of that. And I'll show you how to do that very easily. And if you ever want to know why baton with a knife, this is why. Because we can. Yeah. Because baton and these notches in is about three times easier than carving them in. And all I got to do is a couple taps to the depth that I want. And then just fling it over real quick, clean it up. You know, when you're dealing with small little pieces like this, you do gotta be careful. Keep your hands behind the knife. So what's in front of the knife is gonna cut. Which technically I'm in front of the knife, so. Well, you don't count. Let's clean this square up. Real nice. It keeps moving. <laughs> My hands. Don't get in such a tight shot. Zoom back. You're in my personal space, sir. We're technically closer than six feet. What are you going to do about it? Cough on you. So as you can see, you guys kind of get the point. As long as I do the same thing to the other side, I'm going to get what, you know, is, is commonly called a promontory peg, and it fits together. And <clears throat> the reason why I do like this uh, setup a lot is because once I get the other side made, we'll just go off camera real quick. You guys don't need to see me make the other side. But once we put these together, uh, I can put all this whole trap is tied together. So when I do spring this trap, or when it does get sprung by like a fish or say anything like that, I can quickly set this trap up again, throw it back out in the water, and go. I don't have to sit here and hunt for all the pieces of this trap. So, I'm going to make the other side of this peg, and we'll be right back. So, the reason why this trap is one of my favorites to, say, test the knife is because it's got a lot of small, intricate <coughs> detail work. Excuse you, Corona boy. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and that's why I like making this trap when I'm testing certain knives and things like that, because now that I've got this side squared off, I need to come in here and I need to kind of point this out to an extent. And what I'm doing right now is basically making this trap a little bit more sensitive. I don't want the wind to knock this thing off, but I do want the slightest bump in the water to set it off. So when the fish actually grabs my bait in the water and starts to take off with it, it sets the trigger which sets the hook and everything's tied into a very big tree and everything's sitting there waiting for me when I get back. Before you ask, in most states, this is not legal. When you're surviving, something's wrong, there is no such thing as legality. So, to practice this, do it at your own accord and at your own risk. So, 
here's the basics of the trap. And when there's a line around this, so both of these will be lined, has cordage around it, and so does this. When the promontory peg is pulled, everything flies apart and it sets the hook, you know, fish waiting for you when you get back. All right, so let's get back to some of our more standardized testings. Uh, let's go ahead and baton through this uh, walnut, or I'm sorry, <laughs> this is a maple. Tomato, tomato. To you. So high, what's hard? Eh, we have lots of softwood. Cottonwoods, poplars, that kind of stuff. So, and it's, obviously I They just don't tend to grow anywhere where I'm shooting a video. This is a hardwood forest. Yeah, there's not very many poplars or anything around here. The edge is absolutely still ripping sharp. You know, we have tested several knives and you'll see the succession of videos. Most of them are really, really good. And this one is exceptional. This has got like a semi, quasi convex to it, mostly a flat. But once that grind meets the wood, it just slides right down. And as you can see, I'm not doing very much stuttering on the wood. Everything's pretty smooth. the light touch just those thin feathers that a harsh word will ignite all right if you want you can shut it down and I'll work for a little bit get some feathers going. all right so we've made some nice feathers there we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna ignite this just to see the spine of the knife so in using the spine of the knife, which is an absolute ripper, we're gonna you know, make some fluff here. And that just makes this all more easier to ignite when we're ready. You know, using something like this, <laughs> on like a, a red cedar or juniper as it is uh, you know like a, a red cedar or something like that to get that fluff for tinder this is gonna make a tinder bottle like this you know really quickly let's go ahead and uh, grab a ferro rod see what we get Let's try it one more time. There's still quite a bit of moisture in this. It's pretty easy uh, skill to learn, skill to know, but something that I feel that people should know. How to basically make fire out of literally nothing. How to make your own tender. Yeah, it's just a fresh stick. Oh yeah, it's just really wet. There's lots of <laughs> lots of moisture still in this. But you know, we're not sitting here doing a fire class. We're doing, we're trying to test this knife, and you get the point. You know, we made fire. Cue the uh, Tom Hanks castaway stuff. Um, we tested the spine out. This thing's gonna act like I said an absolute ripper. Take the skin off you if you do it too hard. This is a beast. This is. This is the knife to have. And it's not too big either. It's no. big, but not too big. Right, it's that perfect, it's not crazy too unwieldy. And we've, you guys, if you guys are a fan of this channel and I've been on this channel before, you know my stance on that. I don't like crazy big knives. If you want a machete, carry a freaking machete. Yeah, Chris is eager to grab for this huge Bowie knife he's got. 
in this bag right now. You know, I'm not a fan of huge knives. This is pretty much perfect. Since it has been uh, quite some time since we did part one, just to recap, this is the style sheath that this knife comes in. So you can have it belt carry or horizontal scout carry, either which way. But there you go. That is the Bravo Alpha, designed and sold exclusively by Jason at DLT. Links are going to be to that down in the bottom. So here you go, folks. Christian Prepare Mine 101, along with Will and a bunch of annoying ass freaking birds. Probably spreading some new kind of bird flu raining down on us. <coughs> Infected. <laughs> yeah. Caw, caw. Birds. Caw. That's enough. <laughs> Where's the lawnmower, man? <laughs> yeah, I miss the lawnmower. <laughs> and the ice cream man. And the shed. Yeah. Oh, the good old days. Yeah. All right, Chris from Prepare by 101, thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. Link's down below. Be back with another video here soon, so see you then.